This is every blush available at the drugstore and I'm going to try them all. Why? Well, my blush drawer is overflowing, so naturally my instinct was to buy more blush. But most importantly, to find the drugstore blush champion! Yeah. My goal, be able to confidently walk into the makeup section and know which blushes are worth the buy. First stop is Ulta, which kind of stressed me out. Then I found one of the most beautiful blushes I've ever seen. First drugstore blush I have is the CoverGirl True Blend High Pigment Blush. I have the shade here called Love Me. This retails for around eight to nine dollars. I have a bunch of brushes here, so for every blush, I'm gonna use a new brush those are tongue twisters, so there's no cross-contamination. So I would describe this color as a peachy pink. It has a little bit of a golden shimmer in it as well. The texture is really smooth and creamy, so I'm excited to put this one on. And on the brush, it looks very pigmented, so we'll see how this transfers to the face. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Okay, she is pigmented. Cover girl, I was not expecting that. I usually don't love these sort of like golden reflect shades, but it honestly gave my skin so much dimension. This definitely packs a punch for pigment, delivers on that. The finish does have a shimmer. I think they do also sell some matte shades as well, but I think the shimmer is very finely milled, so you're not gonna have anything chunky looking. At least in this shade that I tried, it gave me a really nice glow honestly looks like a high-end blush. I'll also be rating every blush one to five and then we'll rank which ones are the best at the end. We're gonna go over the scores and I will let you know our winners. I'll give this one a four. It was really pigmented, smooth. I had no issues with it whatsoever. I think it was beautifully pigmented. I'm gonna give it a four because I feel like there's still a little bit room for improvement and I wanna see if we can find something even better than this. Next, we have this L'Oreal True Match blush. This also comes in at around $8.99. This is the shade C12 called Baby Blossom, which is a, looks like it's matte, but it actually has a little bit of a cool tone shimmer into it. And it's like a really pastel pink. It also comes with this little baby brush in here, but they're honestly, actually, should we try it? Let's do it. It's actually not as bad as I thought. Okay, so it looks pretty pigmented. This one seems to be slightly less pigmented, but also keep in mind it is a more pastel shade. I really like that you have that mirror in the bottom. The CoverGirl blush did not have that. Really smooth. What I love about this is it has a cool toned, more silver shimmer in it. Again, it's not glittery, which is another plus. I feel like it's hard to find blushes that have more of that cool shimmer undertone. The shade I think is ultra flattering on me if you have fair skin. It's really, really buildable so you can have a sheer wash or build it up to be even more pigmented. So I feel like it's a versatile blush. So overall, this is a medium buildable pigment blush. The finish, this one has a shimmer in it, but it's mostly a matte base. And then rating this one one to five, I would also give this one a four. It could be slightly more pigmented and this packaging feels a little bit cheap, even though you do get that mirror in the back. So room for improvement. I decided to include Catrice in this video because they are definitely a drugstore price point, even though you can't find them everywhere. I was like, whatever, let me do it as a bonus. So this is the Catrice Air Blush Matte. This retails for $6 and I got the shade Berry Breeze. As the name suggests, this is a matte formula and the texture, nice and silky smooth, doesn't seem too powdery. That looks pigmented. Let's see what we got going on here. Not as pigmented as I was expecting, but still really pretty. This gave me really nice color. It's slightly uneven. I can't tell if that's just like my powder or the blush just not applying completely even. I usually don't reach for shades like this too much, but I find this one really flattering. It is a true matte formula. I don't feel like it's making my skin look too flat though. So that's pretty interesting for this one. Also looks like this has some like really moisturizing ingredients like macadamia oil and shea butter ingredients. So I kind of love that for a matte blush, something that's matte, but still gives your skin some moisture. So this comes in with a matte finish. The pigment I would say is on the medium slash medium low side of the spectrum. And rate this one out of five, I would probably give this a three, taking off two points because I think it could be a little bit more pigmented and apply it more evenly. Fourth in the lineup, we have the Physicians Formula Butter Blush. I got the shade Spicy Mauve. This is the Muramur Butter Blush. I have no idea if that's how you say it. Eh, again, kind of like this cheap packaging. And instead of a brush, it actually, that's where it belongs. It comes with a sponge, which I'm not even going to attempt to use for this blush because that's just not gonna work. This color looks really pretty. 
has that classic physician's formula scent, whether you count that as a plus or a minus, it's kind of up to you. But this feels really silky because it does have that oil butter, I don't know what to call it. It's that moisturizing element to it. Okay, this doesn't look too crazy pigmented. Okay, there we go, getting a little something there. Might be our first not great one. I had to build this one up quite a bit to get it to show on my skin. It does have that shimmer in it. I will say out of the shimmers that we had so far, it does have a slightly thicker shimmer in it. I can just see the particles a little bit more on my face. Uh, other than that, it was pretty good. I'm honestly like not, mm, I was expecting this to be one of the best, but compared to what we've tried so far, I don't know if it's really even like living up to those. So. Oh, I forgot to tell you the price. Yeah, this is actually one of our more expensive options, like $13, $12.99, usually what it retails for. The finish, this one has a little bit of shimmer in it, but like I mentioned, it's slightly chunkier. The pigment is like on that medium sheer side of pigment, really kind of needs to be built up and I'm pretty fair, so that's a little bit weird. I'm actually gonna give this one a two out of five because I'm gonna dock a point for the lack of pigmentation. I'm gonna dock a point for the shimmer being a little bit chunky and also this is kind of just my personal thing. I don't love the smell of these, so it's getting a point removed as well. It's just not my favorite. I'd rather have an unscented blush. I'm really disappointed in this one. Skin's getting a little bit irritated now. If you see this redness through my makeup, just know that's my natural sort of flush going on. Here we have the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush. I got the shade Pink Flush. This is around four to six dollars. It's actually on sale on Ulta right now. This is a baked formula, which naturally has like a little bit more of a dry feeling to it. Looking at this, I'm a little concerned it's going to be glittery because I can see some pretty big chunks going on. Let's try it out. Okay, it looks like they have quite a lot of pigment. Uh-oh. Ooh, okay. This one is very shimmery. I don't know if you can see, it's definitely reflecting a lot, but when I'm looking up close to my skin, it's really looking quite chunky and trying to build this up, not giving me a ton of pigment. I do enjoy the shade. It's more of like a mid-tone coolish pink, which makes me wonder why they decided to put like chunky gold shimmer in it. So I will say that this is definitely a high shimmer finish, quite chunky in the particles. The pigmentation is also a little bit more on the sheer side. I had to build it up. I will say this looks really pretty on camera, but to rate this, I'm also gonna give this one a two, docking points for the chunkiness of the glitter, docking points for the pigment, and then also docking points because this just doesn't, it feels like pretty dry. You kind of have to really work for the pigment on this one. We're on a bit of a downward slope here. Hopefully we can find some redemption soon. Moving on to the Neutrogena Healthy Skin Blush. This is the shade 10 Rosy, which looks more peachy to me. And this one retails for around 980. It looks like Walmart has it for a little bit cheaper, but yeah, you know, we'll say six to nine dollars. This is quite a pastel peach shade. It looks like it does have shimmer in it, but it looks pretty finely milled. So let's see how it goes on the face. Seems pretty creamy. I'm not getting a ton of kickback when I put it on my brush. Hello. One's not showing up. I mean, I'm really going into this. That took a lot of work to build up and I still am not necessarily noticing it too much on my skin. Maybe just a hint of color. Pigment wise, this is really sheer. It took a lot of work to build it up. It does have a shimmer in it, which is very fine, which I appreciate. I'd rather have it be fine than be chunky, but I think they could definitely do some work on making this way more pigmented and easier to use. I'm sadly going to give this a one because the only thing I liked about it was the shimmer particles not being chunky. Everything else, including the packaging, I think just feels cheap, honestly. Hey, before we move on, we need to do a little bit more shopping. So here's the game plan. We're going to go to a couple more drugstores today, see if they have any blushes that the other stores didn't because we need to try all of them. Going to find every single one that you can find at your own local drugstore. So let's go. First stop is Ulta, which kind of stressed me out. Their stock sucked and I was losing hope. And I didn't know if Juvia's place is drugstore or not. Comment below what you think. Anyway, I did end up finding this new L'Oreal blush. On to the next stop, I hit the blush jackpot. Got awkward though since an employee was hovering around me. But then I found one of the most beautiful blushes I've ever seen. I wanted to buy them all. That kind of restored my hope in humanity and finding the drugstore blush champion. Next we have the Milani Baked Blush. Hopefully this will turn things around because this is a highly raved about like holy grail blush at the drugstore, which I haven't tried in years. So I'm really curious to see if it still 
stands up to that name. This is the shade Dulce Pink, by the way, and it retails for around $9. This is, again, a baked formula, so it does feel a little bit more dry when you sort of put it in between your fingers. Oh, that definitely looks pigmented. See if that transfers onto the skin. Definitely much more pigmented than that last Neutrogena blush. That was kind of a train wreck. Okay, pigment. See what the shimmer looks like up close. I would say this has a medium level of pigment, which is great. The shimmer is slightly on the chunky side. Definitely not as chunky as some of the other ones, but also not as finely milled as I would personally like. I do like the shade and the packaging is pretty simple. I will give this one, I'm teetering between a four and a three. I might do a three and a half. I know this is raved about, but I think the shimmer could be a little bit finer. It is giving me like a really plump look to my cheeks, which I love. Super pretty. I think the pigment and the shimmer could be better, but I'm holding out hope. I think we could definitely dethrone this as the best drugstore blush as I try the rest of these blushes. I'm getting this like really random buildup of blush right under my eyes. Let's ignore that. And the bronzer, looking rough. Next, let's try this super OG blush. This is the CoverGirl Cheekers. This is like, I feel like you've probably seen in your mom's makeup bag. I'm not sure how long this has existed, but it seems like it's like ancient makeup. <laughs> So this is the CoverGirl Cheekers blush, retails for around $4 to $6, and I decided to get the shade, it doesn't even seem like it has a shade name, it says 148 if that means anything, I'll put it on the screen if I can find what it is. So this comes in honestly like the cheapest feeling compact I've ever felt, kind of seems like it's going to break within a couple of uses, and then you get this little tiny brush, should we use this? I mean it's been the theme, let's do it. This shade looks really pretty, this looks like it's a true matte shade oh no oh my god this has like a really nostalgic smell look how powdery that is no that <laughs> no to that brush it's also a little bit weird that the blush is so narrow like i feel like i don't want to get like a strip of it on a brush i think it's giving me a little bit of pigment i mean i'm really going into this one as well i can't tell if it's the blush or it's just like my natural redness showing through. I think I got a little bit of color, like it's pretty cool toned. I think the shade is pretty if it had pigment. This is on the sheer side of pigmentation, 100%. It's like barely anything there, especially if you have darker skin than me. I don't really see this working. I'm gonna give this a one because it exists, but there's really no other positive to this at all. Sorry, cover girl. Moving on to something hopefully better, we have the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush. This is the shade Always Rosy. Never heard of this until I bought these for the video. So I'm really interested in this. This is for sure a true matte looking at it. There is no sign of shimmer. It is quite dry feeling, but it does feel like it has a little something more. It does say that it's primer infused, which I'm like not exactly sure what that means, but let's see. Okay. It is showing up at least. It's got that over the cover girl cheekers. Oh, I forgot the price. I think this is $7. This is not the most pigmented, but I was able to get it to build up. I will say I like this packaging. It has this sort of like frosted matte feel to it. Feels a little bit nicer than those like really plasticky packaging. Shade is not my absolute favorite, but we won't hold that against it. The pigment level I would say is medium sheer. I had to build it up, but at least it did build upon itself. So rating one through five, I I would give this one a three. I really like that it's a true, true matte if you want that. It doesn't look too dry. The pigment was okay, but it was buildable. Definitely room for improvement, but it's pretty decent. Honestly, feels like my skin might fall off, but I'm doing it for the blush. I need to find the best drugstore blush out there. I can't give up. Next, one of our most inexpensive options is this Wet n Wild. This is just called their Icon Blush and it's around 329. I got the shade Pinch Me Pink. Comes in really simple plastic packaging. Oh no, it looks a little bit glittery. It is a slightly more cool tone pink, but it has gold shimmer in it. We'll see. We'll give it a chance. Okay. It is a little powdery, but okay. It's got pigment. Thankfully, it's got pigment. 
quite a lot of it actually. I am dipping back in though. Pigment's really good in this one, but I'm a little bit confused because it looks shimmery in the pan and when I swatch it, but if you're blending it in with a brush, all that shimmer kind of like kicks off of your face, which I'm not totally mad at because it's chunky shimmer anyway, and I would prefer it not to have that. Definitely has more of a powdery texture. So pigment level, pretty good on this one. I would say it's medium, almost full pigment. I had to build it up a little bit. Shade's really pretty. The shimmer is chunky, but it, oh my gosh, what is that? The shimmer is chunky, but it brushes away. So I don't know if I should like count that as a pro or a con. Like I'm guessing you'd want the shimmer to be there, right? But it's not good shimmer. I feel like that, I don't know, I'm panicking. I'm gonna say let's give this one a three. I feel like we're working our way back up, but there's definitely, it could be better. Hopefully this next one will be good. This is the Revlon Powder Blush and I have the shade Tickled Pink. It has some really simple, just like square packaging and it has a really creamy feel to it, like one of the creamiest. It does not feel powdery at all. Okay, let's try this bad boy out. This looks completely matte, by the way. Oh, that is nicely pigmented. Okay, this blush is bringing it. It is definitely pigmented. I am getting a tiny bit of powder kickback but I layered this up a little bit. This is gorgeous. I love the shade. It's a really true matte formula. Pigment was great. I didn't have to do too much work to get this like really nice blush, I feel like. Hmm, Revlon, a little surprising. I would say, so pigment level is medium. The finish is matte. One to five, I think we're moving up. I think I would give this like a three, three and a, actually, I think it deserves a four because the only thing that would really change is if it was like a little bit more pigmented and a little bit less powdery. But other than that, everything is pretty good. I'm getting so much blush built up in my hairline. I'm gonna have pink hair for a little bit. Feeling a little bit more hopeful, let's keep going with this Flower Beauty Flower Pots Powder Blush. I have the shade Sweet Pea, which is a very pretty, sort of like muted color. Muted rose, I would say. Running out of clean brushes. This packaging is really pretty. It has this sort of like rose inlay to it, which is a little something different. Okay. That was my fault. I used a really dense brush. That is my fault. My bad. Let's try to blend this out. Okay, let's start that over with a fluffier brush. Okay, it's still really pigmented. I've actually had this one for a little bit and already know I like this, but this is a really gorgeous blush. The pigment is definitely on the medium to fuller pigment level. It feels really creamy and I love this like cool toned pink shade. It is a true matte, so there's no shimmer in it, but I don't think it makes my skin look flat by any means. Very gorgeous. I think it's versatile. You can make it sheer or build it up a little bit like I did. I think it's a really flattering shade. I wonder if they have shimmers of this, but overall, I know, I knew I already liked this one. I would give this one probably a four out of five. There's not much else I would change from it. I think it feels really high quality. Like the packaging is kind of basic, but the actual formula, I do like the little gold as well. Feels a little bit nicer than a lot of these and it just gave me really nice pigment. So four out of five, maybe if there's shimmers, it would get five out of five. Now we have the Honest Beauty Lip Powder Blush in Frisky. One, I was like, is it drugstore or it's not? I was like, why not include it? You can buy this at Target. This is the powder formula, by the way, they also have a cream and this is a shimmer blush. So it's definitely one of the most shimmery of this whole video, like basically straight up metallic. We'll see how it performs on the face. Looks very pigmented. Okay, it is, it is. I don't know what to expect with these. My view of like blush pigmentation has just really been taken for a roller coaster in this video. Whoa, that is really pigmented. Also really pretty. I am also taking in consideration what kind of brush I'm using, by the way. Obviously this is a little bit more pigmented because I'm using a denser brush. So, you know, I kept that in mind. Don't worry. Okay, this blush is so interesting. It literally looks like a metallic eyeshadow in the pan. And when you put it on your face, it I mean, look at that glow. It is so pretty and glowy, but it does not look like glitter at all. Like it actually looks dewy in a way. It's so interesting. The pigment was really great. It's like medium to full pigment, I would say. Finish is, it looks metallic on the face. I would just say it's a very glowy blush for sure. But in terms of actually seeing particles of like shimmer or glitter on the skin, not a ton of that, which is cool. So one out of five, I think 
it's not quite a five. I think it's a four and a half. It's so incredibly pretty. I'm only going to take out half of a point because I think maybe the shimmer, the metallicness of it might not have a wide appeal to everybody. I really love shimmery blushes, but if you don't like shimmer, you're probably not gonna like this one. But I think it's almost there. It's almost the perfect blush. Next into the ring, we have the ColourPop Super Shock Blush. It's available at Target, maybe not other drugstores, but I was also like, yeah, let's throw this in. This is the Birthday Suit Super Shock Blush. These have different finishes. This one is a satin. If you're not familiar with these, they are like a bouncy formula. So they feel super duper creamy, like barely like a powder at all. Okay, let's try this bad boy out. I'm gonna really try to like put a little bit of pressure because I know this is creamier. It can be a little bit harder to actually pick up the product. I wanna give it a fair shot, you know? I do really like the Super Shock shadows. I've never tried one of these blushes though. It looks really good. It looks super smooth, interestingly. It's not quite as pigmented as I would like. It is pigmented if you continue to build it up. It just takes a little bit more work because it is so creamy. So I would say it's on that like medium sheer end of pigmentation. The finish is really pretty. I love this satin. Like it's extremely blurring, which I don't really think we've seen throughout this blush video yet. Gives you a nice glow, feels really moisturizing, and definitely does not look flat at all on the skin. So this is a super unique formula, even though it's not like a true drugstore blush, still included it. So one out of five, I would give this one, did I say the price? I keep forgetting, $9 if I didn't say that. So one out of five, I would rate this one a four. Really gorgeous, could be a little bit more pigmented, but other than that, it's really nice, well-rounded blush for sure. I'm really excited we're gonna find a real gem by the end of this video. Next, we have Maybelline Fit Me Blush. This also seems like a classic, but I've never tried. This is the shade Mauve, which looks really pretty. Honestly, looks like one of my favorite shades that we've tried yet. This looks like it ranges from like six to seven dollars, five ninety nine at Target, seven forty nine at Ulta. But let's try this out. The packaging is quite thin and small, but you know. So this is a really pretty cool tone mauve, and it looks like it has some very fine cool tone shimmer, which is promising. Wow. That was really pretty. Ooh, this one's really pretty. I'm not sure if I'm just like partial to the shade, but the pigment was really nice. I mean, you saw I really didn't have to build it up too much. This has such, can you see the glow? Has such a gorgeous, really fine shimmer in it. And it is very creamy feeling. Didn't give me a ton of like powdery kickback and it doesn't look powdery on the skin at all. I would say it delivers with medium pigmentation, buildable, but gives you really good pigment right off the bat. Finish is shimmery, which I really like, and it's not a baked formula, so for that shimmer to be so fine and not be baked is a really interesting feature of this blush. One out of five. I think I'm gonna give this a 4.5. Out of the shimmers, it's really, really pretty, and I feel like even if it wasn't shimmery, it's such a nice, creamy formula. I was not expecting this. All right, I'm feeling hopeful again that we're gonna find some real drugstore blush gems. It's getting a little crazy there. But let's start with these new blushes that I found from Elme. I actually ended up getting two new shades. I believe these are new to them because I have not seen them before. These are called their Healthy Hue Blushes and it looks like they retail for around $10. So the first shade I have here is a little bit more neutral. So I believe these are actually tell-free blushes. I don't see that in the ingredients. They're also cruelty-free, fragrance-free, and hypoallergenic. So very like, I guess on the more natural side. So here is our first shade. I'm trying to find the shade name. I don't know where it is. I think it might've been on the stickers that I took off. So I will pop it on the screen here. But this one is definitely more of a warm neutral. So the texture of these is really nice and they pick up quite a lot of pigment and they do have a slight shimmer in them. I really like this paper packaging with the embossing on it as well. As you can tell, this was literally just one tap into the blush and it is really giving me some pigment. Maybe not blending out the best. I'm gonna go in with a little bit more to soften those edges. This one I will say is definitely not my best shade and I think I put a little bit too much on, but I would count that as a positive for the fact that it is so pigmented. Shimmer looks gorgeous on the skin. It doesn't look chunky at all. It is very smooth, very glowy. Let me put on the other shade so maybe we can see a bit of a better shade on me. This is more of like a true cool tone pink. 
yeah this is definitely a lot more my shade this one is so pigmented too i think these were absolutely gorgeous the shimmer in them is absolutely perfect i don't know if they're a baked formula they kind of seem like they have like a baked to them. I definitely prefer this shade on me over this one but if you have more of a warm tone skin undertone or if you're just more like a medium skin tone I think you would really like this neutrally orange shade. In terms of pigmentation these are on like the medium full side of blushes which I was totally not expecting from Elme. I really don't have a lot from this brand. But wow, as you can see actually in the swatches that I showed earlier, like the pigment compared to all the other ones that we have tried really outperformed those. I like that these are like hypoallergenic. The paper packaging is really nice. A little bit better than having something that's plastic. So the pigment was medium full. The finish is slightly glowy, but I really want to emphasize that it is not, like you can't see the shimmer really on your skin. This side I see it a little bit more because I did do that second layer, but with this first layer, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It makes your cheeks look really dewy without having to use a cream. Out of five, I mean, these are definitely gonna be up there. They have to be a 4.5. I think they could do with some more shades. I only saw about three or four shades at the store. So Elme, really beautiful formula. If you expand these shades, it might be a real good winner. So I picked up another Milani blush. This is the sort of matte version, really not talked about as much as their baked glowy blush, but I didn't love that one. It was a little bit sparkly. So maybe this will be the best of the Milani ones. So this is the Romantic Rose Rose Powder Blush. And I got the shade 01, which is a very pastel, slightly warm pink. And this one is around $9. You have a clean brush here it's just stained a little bit this is really beautiful packaging it is a little bit powdery as i'm tapping into it let's see how it applies okay i think it might be a little bit hard to tell because this shade is really light i definitely see that pigment showing up though i mean this is a super smooth beautiful matte formula really reminds me of the flower beauty one maybe a little bit more powdery or it could just be the texture of this but this one's beautiful i think i honestly might prefer this over the baked one it's really smooth my skin looks nice and blurred not my absolute favorite shade i'd probably get maybe a little bit more of a pink one but there wasn't a ton of shades to choose from and i will also say this packaging feels like quite luxe it has a thick plastic cap and like a metal looking base it just feels like it's not gonna break if it's in your makeup bag which is great so pigment level i would say is medium buildable because it is that more powdery texture you might have to build it up a little bit more especially the shade if you're darker than me i probably wouldn't recommend this one maybe get something a little bit darker but the finish is completely matte no shimmer or sparkles anywhere to be seen out of five i'm gonna give this one a four it is really gorgeous i'm just gonna take off a point because it is a little bit powdery but it is definitely better than the baked milani blush in my opinion that one was just chunky and i don't know if it's that shade i got but this one i think i would honestly reach for over that one next up was another brand i was like is it a drugstore is it not i was like why not throw it in because it's just a bonus right it can't hurt so this is from found beauty which is exclusive to walmart so yeah i don't know and this is their baked illuminating blush in the shade peach glow this is also like a natural makeup brand so this is a baked formula i've actually had this one for quite a while i did a full face of this brand a long time ago if you have been here since that video props to you and if you're not subscribed come on it's been years i see you this looks like it's maybe originally like 12 dollars, but it goes on sale very frequently so like i mentioned this is a big formula and it has quite a bit of shimmer in it so let's start applying this bad boy yeah this is like one like look at the glow one of those blushes that is like a blush light like a blush and highlight in one because it is very shimmery yeah, this is, I'm going to say the shimmer in this is probably not going to be for everybody. I would be quite light handed with it. This is a really light shade. It's not giving me a ton of pigment, but it's very light to begin with. So yeah, this is, it's almost like more in the highlight category, but it does give you very glowy cheek. So pigment level, I would say is like medium sheer. Seems like you could build it up, but you're going to also build up that shimmer. So that's kind of a con of it. If you like baked shimmery blushes though, I think this is really beautiful. Or if you just wanted to use this as a highlight, packaging it feels really nice as well. So out of five, I would give this one a three, just because I don't think the level of shimmer is really going to be for everybody. But other than 
than that, it's like a really decent formula. Next, we have this very interesting new blush from L'Oreal, which is their infallible 24-hour fresh wear blush. Very new from them. I believe it just came out. I got the shade Confident Pink. They only have a couple shades of these, but this one looked the prettiest to me. This looks like it is a completely matte formula. I'm already smelling fragrance in here, which is very weird. None of these blushes have been fragranced. Oh, the Physician's Formula one has, but this is like, it smells pretty classic L'Oreal. Like if you've ever tried their foundation, the Freshwear foundation kind of smells just like that. Maybe a little bit stronger. I don't know why they put fragrance in here. Totally would prefer without. This one's pretty pricey. Looks like it's like 13 to $16, depending on where you get it. So this also has like a little bit of an embossing and it has the actually same packaging as the other L'Oreal blush. This one didn't come with anything though, so I don't know if it's supposed to, but it does have that nice mirror in the bottom. All right, I'm scared this might be a little bit pigmented for me, but let's try it out. Okay, it's actually applying pretty nicely. Hmm, maybe slightly patchy. Can't tell if that's my foundation though. Oh my God, the fragrance, it's so annoying. <laughs> I put way too much over here. Yeah, I think the fact that I've just been taking my foundation off is making it a little bit patchy. This shade is pretty, it's really bright, which I appreciate that they're like really bringing some color and pigment. I kind of look like I got slapped in the face. I like really wanted to like this. I was really excited when I saw it. It looked pretty, it looked colorful. Pigment level I would say is medium. It says that this is waterproof. That's quite the claim. The finish of this is completely matte, so no shimmer here. And then out of five, I'm gonna have to give it a three. I have to take off a point for the fragrance. And I also just think they could do with a little bit more shades and maybe a slightly less powdery formula because there is just a lot of like kickback. It's really silky and smooth feeling. I also want to mention for the price difference, I don't think you're getting that much of a different formula compared to the original L'Oreal True Match blush that we have. So I might want to keep that in mind too. Now, I think I'm the most excited to try this. Look how beautiful it is. This I found and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. This is from Moira, which I've never tried anything from this brand. I've heard you guys talk about them a little bit, but this is the Signature Ombre Blusher and they had a lot of pretty shades. It was so hard to choose, but I got this shade Soft Berry. This is a cruelty-free brand. What's really interesting is that this has three sort of separate shades that you can mix or use on their own. And this comes in at 950, which seems to be like the mid range for this blush video. So I swatched all three of these shades individually and mixed them together when I showed you in the little clips. So you have a very light pink shade, this mid-tone purple, and then a deep sort of burgundy red. These are so pigmented. This like inlay is so beautiful. It has a butterfly, little flowers on it. So as I'm applying this, I'm gonna stick to this upper portion just because this shade was so pigmented. It's just gonna look a little bit too much for me, but I do appreciate that they have like such a nicely pigmented deep shade for darker skin tones. I'm getting a little bit of powderiness from this. I'm actually gonna take a tiny bit of that deepest color, work it off a little bit, and then just maybe build it up a little bit. There it is. Okay, that really, amped it up. I love that you can create an ombre blush effect just using this one blush, like starting with this lighter shade, sort of like I did, and then taking the darker shade more on the backs of the cheekbones or just mixing them all together. It's just really versatile. I will say the pigment is on like the medium, medium sheer side. I'm guessing it's depending on the brush. This one's slightly looser than what I would usually use, but yeah, this was gorgeous. The finish is completely matte, so you're not getting any shimmer, but it feels really creamy, a slight bit of powderiness, but once it's blended in, it just feels really nice and almost moisturizing. I think I went a little bit overboard with this color, but I really love the customability. I really made sure to enunciate that word. The customability of it is you can make an ombre look, you can use each shade individually, or you can mix them all together. So I think for the price, you're just getting a lot out of this blush and it just looks absolutely beautiful. So out of five, I'm also gonna give this one a 4.5. If it had a little bit more pigment and maybe if they had some shimmery options, I think that would almost bump it up to be the perfect blush. There's room for improvement, but out of all the blushes, this was definitely a standout.
top of fifth inning, all flush the lined up, and we're about to hit a home run. Sports things. I'm just now realizing you probably cannot read this, but this is our drugstore blush champion leaderboard. I have all the blushes written out here. We're gonna go over the scores and I will let you know our winners. I don't know why I chose pink. You literally can't ask this, but whatever. So we have our top three spot here. We're gonna crown both a matte and a shimmer winner. I wrote down all the scores. I'm gonna go through them with these little magnets and show you what is currently at the top and we'll discuss from there. So we did have a lot of fours, but we have the highest scores as a 4.5 because I did not give anything a five. I don't know, I was just hoping for perfection and I did not get it. So since there is multiple ones that have basically tied, I'm doing a little bit of contemplation and changing these scores up just a little bit. So the first one I'm gonna change is the Flower Beauty Cheek Pots Blush. Because I really like this, I only gave this one a four, but after trying all the other matte ones, I'm actually gonna bump this up to a 4.5. I feel like it deserves it. But on that note, I also decided to move the Fit Me blush down to a four. Just because again, comparing it to the other shimmers, it was a little bit visible on the skin because you had to layer up that pigment. Don't look yet. I need some like triumphant music. Put it on now. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I can that. Okay, here is our, I just realized it says top three. Should it be top three? This is poorly planned. So starting with matte, these are tied. I will pick between them and pick my favorite. But just to start, the Flower Beauty Cheek Pots Blush. I don't know if that's exactly the name of it, but it's the one that's the flower embossed pattern. And then we have the Moira Ombre Blush, which I have on now. I did like a little bit of an ombre look and it's looking like a little bit much on camera, but it was fun. Anyway, onto our shimmer winners, we have the Elme blush. I was totally not expecting Elme to even be on this leaderboard. And then we also have the Honest Beauty Lit Up blush, which I'm gonna add another one to both of these because both the Flower Beauty and the Honest Beauty, I don't know if that's really a true drugstore because you can't find them everywhere. So I'm gonna give you guys a third alternate that's maybe a little bit more available. So taking all those factors into consideration. So some runner ups for the matte category, we have the Revlon Colorstay blush, which got a four. And we also have the Milani matte blush, which got a four. The regular matte one, not the baked one, that didn't score very well. So between the Revlon and the Milani, I think I'm going to give it to the Revlon Colorstay blush because the shade was really beautiful. I believe they have more shades than the Milani one and it just applied really beautifully and definitely surprised me. So let's add that to the board. This isn't particular order by the way, I'm still going to pick a winner for each so stay tuned. Now we have the shimmer, let's see what we have for runner up. So we actually ended up with quite a few shimmer runner ups. We have the CoverGirl True Blend blush which was the first blush we tried on. The L'Oreal True Match blush which was the second one, these are in the order that I applied them by the way. We have the ColourPop Super Shock blush. And we also have the Fit Me blush, which I moved down to a 4. It was a 4.5, but it's still on a runner-up category. So let me see. Out of all these favorites, I'm going to remove the ColourPop one because you really had to build that one up. So we'll take that out of the running. So then that leaves us with these three very true drugstore brands. Out of these three, I'm going to take out the L'Oreal True Match. That one was a little bit more sheer, just like the ColourPop, and you really had to build it up. So then that leaves us between the CoverGirl True Blend... I cannot say that. So that leaves us between the CoverGirl True Blend Blush and the Fit Me Blush. Out of these two, I am definitely giving it to the CoverGirl True Blend Blush. The Fit Me Blush... Eh, just not as good as this CoverGirl one. This one was super pigmented. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty of this board now. We have our top three in each category. So out of the mats, we have the Flower Beauty Cheek Pots, the Moira Blush, and we have the Revlon Colorstay. Out of shimmers, we have the Elme Blush, the Honest Beauty Lit Up Blush, and the CoverGirl True Blend. Starting with our matte category, out of these three, I'm gonna move the Flower Beauty one into the third spot because I know it is not sold everywhere. I think the Moira might be available more places. So then we have the Moira blush in the Revlon Colorstay. I think, don't look. The Moira Ombre blush is our matte blush drugstore champion. 
This blush freaking surprised me. The ombre-ness, it's absolutely beautiful, but it over-delivered on the performance. It was so pigmented, it's so blendable. I mean, I put it on and like, it's almost too pigmented, like in a good way. I really love that because it's inclusive to other skin tones. They have lots of different shades. So you can customize your own shade, make your own ombre look. There's just so many, like I feel like you're getting so much bang for your buck with this blush comes in at around $9. I think it's totally worth it. If you see this Moira blush, ombre blush, you can't miss it. It's absolutely beautiful at your drugstore. Pick it up. Moving to our shimmer category. So I am going to move the Honest Beauty. I'm gonna move that to the third spot because you can't find it everywhere and I really wanna take the availability of these blushes into consideration. So that one's beautiful. You can get it on Amazon. You may be able to find it at your Target. Really beautiful, so keep it in mind, but that narrows it down to two. So now we have the Elme blush and the CoverGirl True Blend blush. This is a really tough one because the CoverGirl True Blend was so pigmented, but I really love the shimmer in the Elme blush. I think, hold on again, don't look. Told you not to look. Dun dun dun, dun. our shimmer drugstore blush winner has got to be this Elme blush. These winners honestly have shocked me. I literally do not own any other makeup from Elme, but I guess this is a new blush that they came out with. I absolutely love the shimmer in this blush. It, I think it's a baked formula. It just applies so smoothly. It's so pigmented. Hopefully you saw in the swatches in the application. It really does deliver on the pigment. So again, for the price, it really does like over deliver. You're getting everything you want in a blush. If you do like shimmer, this is the most undetectable. But I really want you to keep in mind the CoverGirl True Blend blush as well. They may have a few more shades. It's really pigmented. The shimmer is still really fine. Slightly more visible than the Elme one. I'm just really partial to like baked formulas. I think they look so beautiful on my textured skin. So really keep this one in mind. But Elme, congratulations on winning the Drugstore Blush Championship of 2023 as the shimmer winner. Don't go anywhere just yet, folks. We still have some losers to announce. Just for fun, let's see what the worst blushes of this haul was so you know what blushes to avoid as well. Going through the list, we've got a one. We've got a one. Let's mark these twos as well. Got two of those. The Physician's Formula Butter Blush. This blush I feel like is hyped up. Everyone loved it. Maybe like, I don't know, five years ago it might have been the best blush at the drugstore. It has been dethroned. It's really, really chunky looking on the skin in terms of the shimmer. Pigment wasn't great and I just don't like the scent of it. So what that Essence Baked Blush. I really wanted to love this one. Maybe they have shades that aren't as glittery, but this was just freaking glittery. Neutrogena Healthy Blush. This came in at a one. This was like an absolute garbage blush. It just had absolutely no pigment to it and we don't like that. And then we have the CoverGirl Cheekers blush, which is that little, 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 that little packaging, ancient looking blush that we've seen like all of our moms put on. It is not worth it. I believe it's really affordable, but there's literally zero pigment and I am super pale and it just barely showed up on me. So avoid this one at all costs. Okay, so here are our top two winners. The Moira Ombre Signature Blush as our matte winner in the Elme Healthy Hue Blush. I just looked up the actual name of it so I could give you that information because it seems like I should, right? And make sure you do like, I feel like a teacher right now, students, please like this video. It's almost my birthday, so if you want to wish me a happy birthday and happy maybe birthday! you just really like this video, I hope you did. Took me literally weeks to make this. Push that like button. And also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to give me an even better birthday wish, make sure you are subscribed. Something like 50% of you are not subscribed, so if you do watch my channel and you enjoy it, it really helps me out. But that was it for our video. Lindsay out. Watch another one. See you there. Bye.